Hey everyone, welcome to Alchemy with Zero Phase. My name's Eric. And in this video, I want to walk through uh, my workflow. Uh, I did a couple videos, short videos, a little while ago where I had a person and I showed how you can just change the scene and the clothing and keeping the same person. I uh, kind of synced it with some music. Anyway, it's, a lot of people love that. And uh, uh, one person was even like, uh, what do you say? <laughs> Bro, do a tutorial. <laughs> And so, uh, yeah, anyway, we're going to walk through doing uh, something similar to that. And I uh, hope you enjoy this. And I hope you learn something from it. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to select that. We just kind of get things set up here. Um, what we want to do, uh, we'll do something similar. We're going to just do a scene with, you know, uh, maybe somebody modeling or something like that. So let's come over here. Let's grab a, uh, uh, let's create a, a prompt. So we're gonna do, let's just do you know, same thing here, digital illustration, that's fine. Uh, what we're gonna do is a beautiful woman standing centered on a, sh a city street. Trending. Get a couple of prompts here. Uh, for those of you who are just seeing this for the first time, this is my prompt generator that I have developed to use chat GPT to develop or to generate amazing prompts. It's very intuitive, very flexible. This is this is uh, a thousand times more advanced than than uh, the ones you see on Huggy Face or the spreadsheets that people are the really cumbersome spreadsheets that people have tried to use. Um, you can get it on my store. Uh, go to shop.zerophase.com. It's in a link below. Um, but yeah, so let's see. Uh, Captain Digital Illustration portrays an elegant woman poised and condescending in the heart of a bustling city street. Okay, so we're just going to see if we can get an image from that. If we want to pick a stunning woman as the focal point. Yeah, we're, you know, let's grab that one. I like that one better. Let's run that over here. We're going to throw that in. And uh, we're going to do portraits on that one as a negative prompt. But just a few minor adjustments that in the ne prime ne negative prompt that uh, it does. So we're going to set this up as kind of a, a portrait uh, dimensions, so aspect ratio, uh, 4 by 5. We're going to generate a few images here just to see if we can get one that uh, fits what we want. Okay. Um, I am going to up the scale on this a little. This uh, model does pretty good when you're dealing with higher resolutions, so we're just going to see what that gives us here. The uh, RPG Artist Tool model, you can get that on Civit AI. It's an amazing model. And uh, uh, just like, especially for doing like fantasy and, and uh, il illustrations. And, and you can do photorealistic stuff, but it still has that slight illustrated look to each photo. Um, very cool model, though. So I'll let that go through. It looks like we're already getting a couple images here that uh, uh, we'll be able to use for what we're doing. So uh, once we get an image here, we'll go over to InPaint Anything. I'll show you how to create the mask and uh, the adjustments you need to make for this to work really effectively. Okay. Give that a second to go through here. Okay. So let's see what we got. That one's not bad. We could work with that one. Eh, not so much. Not so much. That one's not bad, too. I think that one is... What do we got here? That one might be easier to work with, actually. Yeah, let's try that one. Let's try that one. Okay. So let's grab that. We're going to send this over to... Actually, we're going to have to um, save this. So give me just a second here. Okay, and then we're going to come over here to InPaint Anything. And um, InPaint Anything is a pretty fantastic extension. Uh, again, you can go to your extensions go to uh, available, look for it, should show up as, uh, let's see, where is it? In paint, uh, so SD Web UI, InPaint Anything. The link is right here for the GitHub. Um, but 
I'm pretty sure this one is available in the uh, the repository. If not, uh, just grab, you know, I'll link the extension down below um, and you just grab that and do install from URL, okay? Uh, a couple things to note, uh, when you get this installed, you'll need to download the model. So there are several models here, uh, depending on what you want to do. The defaults on this one, you just hit download model, give it a few minutes, it'll download the model, depending on your internet connection, uh, it may take a little while, okay? Um, and then uh, once you get those downloaded, we can start moving forward here. Um, we're going to grab this image, drop it in here. Okay. All you do is hit uh, run segment anything. Oh, they got some new options here. I just updated a little bit ago. So scale width, left, right balance. I'll have to look at these a little layer. I'm just going to leave them on default. We're going to run segment now. What it's going to do is go through the image and identify individual separate objects. Um, and items. Just takes an initial, like when you first use it, just takes an initial minute to kind of load everything up. So, as you can see, we have uh, like a lot of the buildings identified, we have her, and uh, we can actually do some pretty cool stuff with it. So, uh, here's something you need to know. You can see the little cursor moving around right there. Let's, uh, let's increase its size just a little so you can see it a little bit better. Okay. And what this does in this particular screen, all this cursor does is you want to mark the areas that you want to mask. I usually like to keep the, the cursor small because uh, you don't need to mask it out like draw over everything, which you can do. But the way this works is if you mark in an area once like that, that entire area is flagged to be masked. Okay. And so what we're going to do in this video is we're just going to be changing clothing. Okay. We want to put her in some different clothing. Uh, and and shift what she looks like. So we're going to mask that out. We're going to mask um, the belt here. Now, if you if you mask an area that crosses both colors, it'll flag both those areas. So we're just going to mask this all out. We're just going to flag that. Um, it does look like there's slight a slight visibility of the skirt behind her legs there. Uh, let's just play with it and see what it does. We're going to mask that. Okay, let's shrink this down. Let's see if we can grab that area just right behind her legs there. Let's just see what that looks So once you have the ones flagged that you want flagged, then just hit Create Mask. Come down here, and this will be where you are going to be able to figure out if you need to make adjustments, if you masked too much. Uh, sometimes it'll flag other areas. You'll get outlines around things you didn't want. So it looks like there is a green here that I'm not seeing. Well, no, I see it. Okay, it's just really faint. So we're going to flag those two areas and then hit uh, Create Mask one more time. Okay, there we go. And it looks like it's padding it more so than it used to. So they may have fixed that. We used to do have to do like expand mask region in order to uh, get it to uh, cover everything that it needs to cover. So it looks like they by default are, are adding a little bit of a buffer uh, to it, which it needs. Um, what we're going to do though, in this area down here where it shows the mask, it's hard to tell, but it looks like it's masking out other areas that we don't want. So let's increase this and that'll make it, yeah, see how it's um, creating a mask around areas we don't want. So this is where this area is for. We come over here, we select our masking tool and we don't want the hands masked. So we're gonna block that out. Make sure that's the same there. We're gonna mask out this here. And all we're doing is we're drawing the areas we do not want it to do anything with, okay? Including up here, it looks like, okay? Once you get that selected, then you just do trim mask by sketch. And so with all the areas you just masked, it'll just get rid of the uh, the whites in that area, okay? Okay, so now we have the image and uh, we can do a few different things with this. If we're just gonna be changing the clothes, we'll leave it like this. I'm gonna expand the mask one more time on that. So we have plenty of buffer. It's covering all the different areas we want, okay? And then once we have this, now we go uh, 
let's see, we want the mask only. Okay, and then we're gonna go get mask as alpha of image. Yeah, let's see, that's not what we want, let's see, get mask. There it is, that's what we want. This is a new feature, I'm not familiar with that yet. As alpha of image, so it'll keep that and then you can take that into other areas. So uh, we don't want that, but let's see what it is. So now we would just send this over to image to image in paint. Okay, so it sends the original image over, sends the mask over. Now what we're gonna do, we need to come up with some different scenes, okay? So all we're gonna be doing is changing the clothing here, okay? So I'm gonna come back over to my Stable Diffusion uh, prompt generator, and what I wanna do is, I only wanna modify the second one here, or uh, we could take this and say create five more prompts of this, but what I want to do, look, let's try this here, uh, using the second prompt only, five prompts, uh, 30 words each, five different specific styles of uh, jackets, and let's see jackets and short skirts because that's all we have masked out okay trending let's see what it does with that okay perfect yeah so grab that let's read through these just make sure we get we want a digital illustration showcases a fashionable woman wearing a sleek leather jacket paired with short plaid shirt uh exuding an Edgy and rebellious vibe. Okay. Uh, artwork cheek woman dons a tailored blazer, short denim skirt. Okay. Short pleated skirt, vibrant bomber jacket. This is going to be cool. So now we're just going to copy that whole thing. We got five prompts here that change the style of the clothing she's wearing. Okay. Again, if you don't have this prompt in her, this is. <laughs> this is a game changer for this. Anyway, we're going to come over here. We're not going to put it in here. We're going to select our negative prompt. Um, portraits, again. Not that it should make too much difference. You can use a prime negative. Get that. I got my style sheet out on the Google on my Google Share. I'll link that too. Um, so you have access to the styles I'm using, the negative prompts I'm using. Um, we're going to do only, only masked. Okay. And then... Actually, you know, we'll do whole picture. I think that's all we need on this. Okay. We want to make sure we have the uh, width and height correct. I think this was uh, 960, if I'm not mistaken. Let's go take a quick look at that and see what it was. 960 by 768. Okay. Just going to make sure that's the same. We're going to switch this over to, yeah, we're going to leave it on Euler A. It's fine. Okay. Leave that. We are going to uh, leave it on 0.75 because we're asking for some pretty significant changes. Actually, no, we're going to drop that down. 0.57. That should give us the changes we want, but leaving the overall aesthetic. Okay. Now we're going to come down here to the extension or scripts. We want um, prompts from file or text box. Okay. And we're going to paste all those prompts we just created in here. Just, uh, just exactly as they are, okay? And that's it. Now what we're gonna do is generate five more images based around this mask, our descriptions. Let's see, how, see what it does uh, in that model. Oh, you know what we do need to do? I apologize. We need to switch this over to an in-painting model or else it's just gonna look funny. So let's go to the V3 and painting model for the same checkpoint. Uh, this one does not have VAE baked in, so I, I want to make sure the colors are correct. So we're gonna make sure we select the VAE FT MSE 84 or 840,000. I believe you can get these VAEs uh, either on the Civit AI page for that checkpoint or on Hugging Face. Okay, now that we got the settings all set right, we got the model and the VA, VAE checkpoint uh, or, or uh, uh, VAE set in, uh, we'll go ahead and render this again and see what it does.
Should be pretty quick, because all we're doing is we're just changing what's there for clothing. All right, let's bring these up. So there's the first one, the plaid skirt, leather jacket, and we got the denim skirt with the uh, tweed jacket. And uh, as you can see, it goes through and we get, we can have an amazing variety. You can stick as many prompts as you want in that box down here um, and have it render out an image for each one. Or you can put those five in there, you can change the batch size or batch count and render out a whole ton more as well. So very cool way of trying out different outfits. I know there's probably been other people who do tutorials on this. This was a real quick, simple one. Now, I know a lot of you are wondering about the um, uh, changing the entire scene. So what we're going to do is go back to in paint anything and we're going to wipe out, uh, let's see. No, we're actually all we're going to do is we're going to grab and, and include in the mask um, Oh, you know what? We're going to change the entire thing. So we're going to wipe this out. All we're going to do is select her face. Okay. And uh, let's shrink that down. We're going to select her hands. Uh, that's why I use a small mask at a large screen. Okay. And we'll select her legs too. We'll keep that the same. So all we're doing is keeping things that are the skin is exposed. We're also we're going to let it change the hair too. And then down here we're going to select invert mask. Create mask. Let's see what that gets us here. Okay. So what it gave us is exactly what we want. We got her face, her hands, her legs, everything else is going to be masked. Okay. So we're going to go get mask over here. We're going to send that over to InPaint image. And then what we want to do is, let's see here. We want to make sure that we're inpainting, the inpainting mask. We're going to do the whole image. Leave it on your A, but we want to come up with some different prompts. Let's put her in, we're going to be putting her in some different scenes. Okay, so let's go back over to our prompt generator. And we're going to do, we're going to take that same one we did. We're using the second prompt only, five prompts, 30 words each. We're going to do five different specific fantasy scenes and sci-fi scenes. Now it may create five prompts mixing fantasy and sci-fi or it might create five prompts of each. I didn't say each so it'll probably just do five. Let's see what it does. So we have uh, reveals ethereal fantasy scene where a mythical force awakens under shimmering moonlight conjuring a sense of magic. Okay, so it took out the person. So what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, include a beautiful woman in each prompt. What this should do is just add a woman into each one while keeping the scene the same. Okay. So we're going to copy that, go back over to Stable Diffusion. We're going to come down here. We're going to get rid of all these, paste those new ones in there. And I don't think we really need, oh, you know, we're going to up this because we want it to change the entire scene. Okay. We're also going to increase the mask blur a little bit on this as we want it to incorporate as much of the, well, you know, no, because we're dealing with such slow resolution that we're going to, it might take away from her face on that. Uh, we're on in painting, got everything else set up the way it should be, and let's go ahead and render it out and see what we get. Again, this should be pretty quick. We're dealing with low resolutions. Uh, I know each person has different uh, video cards, but uh, as you can see, we're getting some pretty crazy looking scenes. These are awesome. Oh my goodness, that one's awesome. I love that. This allows you to try out just a ton of different styles all at the same time. Um, giving you uh, the ability to find inspiration, honestly. So there we got a uh, beautiful nature scene, uh, a little more futuristic going on there. Uh, that one's cool. I don't know what's going on with that one, but uh, 
I love the angel wings. She looks like she might be carrying some feathers or have a feather tail. <laughs> Not sure. Uh, again, more futuristic dealing with starships. That looks kind of like a movie poster, a uh, sci-fi movie poster. Uh, there's more fantasy scene, princess magical. Then back to that one. So very cool stuff. I mean, this you get a wide range of ideas you can do with this. Um, let's try let's try one more thing here. Let's go back to this. Uh, and let's say add a second person, comma, a man to each prompt. So I want to have the, the woman in there, but I also want to have a man in there. Perfect. Okay, so we got we got each prompt got modified perfectly. We're gonna grab that, head over here, throw those in. Oops. Try this try that again. Grab that. Then we're gonna paste that in there. And let's re-render. See if it even does it. Looks like you had a man back in the background. There's there's a man there. So what we're gonna do, we want to change this significantly. So we're gonna bring this up right there on that a little bit. And then come over and render it again. Let's see what it brings anything in. That first one's not. That one, he, it's bringing the guy a little more in focus, which is good. Second person, but not a man. There we go. Yeah, so some of them are doing it, some of them aren't. You got to play around with the settings on it. Uh, it really depends on you know the width and everything of the scene. So, as part of this, I want to actually take one of these images and we're going to uh, use as my title image for my video when I put this out. So let's see. I like that one. That one's really cool. And what we're going to do, we're going to send it over to. Uh, we're going to do the uh, the control net out painting technique. Okay, so what we're going to do, yeah, we're going to send this image that we generated. I want to set this up in a 16 by 9 format so that um, I can use it as a thumbnail on my on my video. Okay, so we're going to. Okay, so I went back and looked some things up. Um, what I want to do is we're going to. I want this image to be the image we're going to use as the thumbnail for the video as I put it up on YouTube. So we're going to use the control net out painting technique. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar, there's a couple different ways you can out paint, but this is a new thing that was introduced that allows you to do really quick out painting. We're going to take this image we generated. One of, uh, it's one of the many we generated here recently. Uh, and we're going to send it over to, uh, let's see, where is it? Text to image control net. Let's see if this works. There it is. Okay. <clears throat> and then we're going to, so this is the original image. Uh, we have a description here we're going to grab that we created earlier when I was messing around with this. And we just want to add detail to the surrounding image. Okay. So we're going to enable pixel perfect. We're going to use the in painting. This is all under control net under text to image. Okay. And then the original image size was 768 by 960. I want to actually increase that, uh, but I want it to be uh, same height, but I want it to be 16 by 9. So it's going to change that, but all we do is come in here. We're going to set this to 960. Okay. Should automatically put that there. And when you're changing, when you're doing the outpainting method this way, you only change one axis at a time. So we're going to increase the width this time. We're not going to do the height, but you could increase the height on the second run. So you'd leave this number the same and change that to outpaint that way. So we got that, got that selected. Okay. We're going to do resize and fill. You always make sure you select resize and fill on this. Okay. What that does, it resizes the canvas and then fills in the blank area. Okay. And I think all the other settings are fine. Uh, we're going to change that. We don't want uh, multiple batches. We just want one image. Okay. And I think that's it. So we're going to go ahead and hit generate on that. Oh, we're going to set this. Or I don't know if you need the end painting model or not. Let's try it with the end painting model and then we'll go from there. Okay. 
Give it a second to kind of spool up here. You can see the edge where it's buffering and pulling information from the type of scene that it's got going on. Now I am increasing the width pretty drastically uh, to get that 16 by 9 ratio at that height. Uh, some images you may want to gradually increase the width, but uh, I've worked with this enough. I feel like I can trust it to do something really impressive. What you might end up getting here is like a scene where it goes off into the forest, you know, past this waterfall. Uh, so I don't know. We'll see what it, what happens here. It's actually not bad. That's pretty good. I like it. Got these kind of cool rock formations here. Definitely something I think I could run with. But you could put it in any description you want. Um, it might be cool if I put like ancient ruins or something like that. So I mean, while we're waiting for that, oh, so we can take that and in paint with VA. So yeah, so we got the the misty kind of whatever. Let's redo that again, except we're gonna change the prompt. Uh, change the scenery to ancient ruins. There it is. Okay. Now let's grab that. I know I'm not reading through it entirely, but I actually, uh, I've used my prompt generator enough. I trust it to do uh, something that I like. Okay. So let's go ahead and it, you know, we're going to try it without the in painting model. I want to actually do that. I'm going to shut this off here. I just want to see what it does. I don't think we need the in painting model on this. let that spool up and start rendering. I kind of want to look at some of the other options here. I don't think there's many options with this. Oh, that was the other thing I might do is is on the put the ending control step down, let the AI really run wild with it, but let's see what it does first here. Well, this is going to be very interesting. As you can see, it's putting a woman in there. I totally forgot to ask it to take out the person in that one. Uh, because I, I, let's stop that. Let's go back over here. Remove the person from the scene. All right, grab that. See how quick that is? And let's come over here. Hit it one more time. Okay, while it's finishing this up, I did switch it back over. I didn't like the result I was getting under the normal checkpoint, so I decided to try it one more time, switching it back over to in-painting, and the results are much better. So definitely use an in-painting model on this. Some of you may have already known that. I don't know, whatever. So here we got uh, the ancient ruins. Kind of a mysterious view. Her focus is definitely on her. Really like this layout. This is actually pretty cool. You know, when you do the uh, out painting, you do get what looks like a line right here as it tries to blend that. So I'm going to show you real quick how to fix that. Okay, so we're going to send this over to in painting. Bring in the image. Let's blow that out there. Let's send that over again. Oh, we got to select the actual image here. Uh, oh, we had it selected. Okay, try it one more time. There we go. Okay, so we have this line right here. What we're going to do, I'm going to show you a little technique to blend this in. Super easy. This one's got a little bit, I'm not so worried about that one. It's this one over here that looks like it's having some issues. And that's what you do. Okay, and we are on the in-painting model. We are going to leave it at 0 0.74. Uh, we're going to disable the checkpoint here at, the, at this point. We don't need it. And uh, I think we're going to leave that. We're going to do a uh, whole picture. No, we're going to do, yeah, whole picture because we got the whole thing there. That's fine. And uh, leave everything else the same. Mask, blur, make sure it's up at about 12 for this. 
Okay, and then uh, hit generate. What this should do is fill this in. You're going to get a lot more break up. It's going to break that line up and fill in intuitively the details around that edge. Probably with something that looks like hanging vines, uh, you know, ancient ruins, maybe a pillar or something, but who knows. So now let's grab this canvas, shrink that back down, pull this up. Much better. You do get something that looks like hanging vines that blends so much better with the rest of it. We could bring this over. Let's just for you know giggles here. Let's bring this over. We're going to shrink this mask down. We're going to erase what's there. We're just going to do the same thing here. Nature doesn't work in straight lines, so we're going to do that. Leave all the settings the same. Just hit generate real quick. Should break that line up or put in something that looks a little more uh, artificial too and that's totally fine okay and you can keep working with this as much as you want to get with the result you want that looks great that will be my image I might upscale it and, and adjust her face just a tiny bit but I love it I appreciate you guys following with me on this. Uh, again, I know this kind of feels like it's flying from the seat of my pants. Some of it is, and uh, some of it isn't. But I hope you enjoy the content and learn something from this. Uh, like and subscribe. Uh, visit my store. You see me using my prompt generator. If you haven't gotten it yet, you're missing out. This it helps out so much in speeding up what you're doing in here and being able to come up with amazing content. So we'll talk to you later. Thanks again.